the waitress. Oh God, do it, God. Oh God, unlock resources, God. Oh God, knock down walls, oh God. Bust down barriers, oh God. Help us get the right connections, oh God. Give your name to praise all of the days of our life. Oh God. Let the church let forth a sound of victory. To the Lord of your life. Lord of your life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, open your mouth and give it to the Lord.
scripture tonight shall be found in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. Hallelujah. St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Lord bless your name. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. amen. I want us to read it together tonight. Matthew chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. Hallelujah. As I go deeper into my follow me. Follow me. The cost of discipleship. Hallelujah. Let's read together verse 27. He says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. In this segment of Follow Me, the Cost of Discipleship, we want to entitle this tonight. Disciples are learners. Amen. Last week we talked about disciples being followers. But tonight we want to deal with disciples being learners. Say that with me. Disciples are learners. You are a pupil, praise the Lord. And that is a part of the uh, definition of a disciple, praise the Lord. This particular scripture that as we read this particular text is an invitation to know God. Amen? Amen? You read all of these verses, it is an invitation. These four verses is an invitation to know God. This knowledge of God is not uh, a mere acquisition of facts about God, but this is a call to an intimate relationship with Him, initiated by him. Because no one can come to know him without him revealing himself. And no one can come to him without being drawn. According to St. John 6 and 44, no man can come unto God save he draw him. Come on somebody. Praise the Lord. And so tonight this learning of God is an invitation to uh, know him, praise the Lord. And the word know here, amen, is in the Greek word, praise the Lord, episkonosko. Amen. Episkonosko. And it means, praise the Lord, to become thoroughly acquainted with, to know thoroughly, to know accurately, to know well, to recognize by sight, by hearing a certain Signs to perceive who a person is, i.e., to just to perceive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To find out and to ascertain. It is uh, some mark of recognition that I know you. Praise the Lord. There, praise the Lord. My wife, having been with her for 20 years, I know her. And in knowing her, Praise the Lord. There are just some things that if you cut out the light and she came walking to me in the darkness, I would know her frame from everybody else's because there is a knowledge of her. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. And if someone came in with the same exact voice and the same exact shape, if I just saw the way they did things, I would know the difference because I know her. I've spent time. I've learned her. Praise the Lord. 
And so in this particular scripture, Jesus is, 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 is almost like a call of discipleship. And this is a call to become acquainted, praise the Lord, and knowing the Lord, to know him, praise our God. And I want to I dissect this a little bit and break it down, praise the Lord. The first thing he, he begins by telling us in verse 27, that all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the, the Son but the Father. And no man, uh, uh, and neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. In that first verse, praise the Lord, is the whole mystery of the Godhead locked up in there. Praise the Lord. And so, amen, to become a student of God is to begin to have an understanding of who God is. Because quite frankly, you could have all, praise the Lord, of the uh, 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 praise the Lord doctrines down pat all of the moralistic things correct but if we don't have an understanding of God if God is not right then everything else is wrong praise the Lord if you look at the church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints i.e. the Mormons they are a very moral uh, religion they put a lot of us Pentecostal apostolic folk to shame because they, they don't, a lot of them don't even drink coffee. No caffeine, praise the Lord. Amen. They, they, they just that holy. Amen. But they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Can I talk for just a few minutes? Praise the Lord. Jehovah's Witness, very learned people. Amen. They know what they believe, even if it is out of a comic book. They know what they believe, praise the Lord. Amen. They passionately spread it. Hallelujah. They put us Christians to shame in evangelism. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get cussed out and get right back up the next Saturday morning and go right back to it. Because they believe in what they're doing. But, praise the Lord, they don't have God right. And when you don't have God right, praise the Lord, when you miss a man who God is, praise the Lord, you have a problem. Praise the Lord. You learn of God, or a disciple learns through, number one, hearing. Number two, experience. Number three, the study of the word of God. And number four, by revelation. I'm going to say that one more time. We as disciples learn through hearing, through experience, through the study of God's word, and through revelation. Praise the Lord. Somebody give me Romans 10 and 17. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 17. What does it say? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. So a disciple gets their faith by what they hear. Come on, somebody. So it stands the reason if you don't position yourself to hear something, you won't know anything. Praise the Lord. And then what you hear, sister pastor, must be directed by the word of God. I.e. the written word of God or the revealed word of God, which the two do not, amen, disagree with each other. If somebody gives you a prophetic word that goes against what's written in the scripture, I don't care how good it sounds. Praise the Lord. If you receive a vision, I don't care how good it sounds, if it contradicts scripture, it didn't come from God. Right, right. Somebody could prophesy to you and it come to pass and they still not be a prophet of God. Praise the Lord. So, so, so your standard of, of, of a prophetic utterance needs to go deeper than the fact where it sure came to pass. So he must be a true prophet. Praise God. He might be, she might be a witch. Might be speaking to you by a familiar spirit. 
Come on, somebody. But true faith comes, amen, and that word faith there is dealing with your conviction and what you believe about God and even enough faith to the saving of your soul. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. When Israel became a nation, somebody give me Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Quicker. But Israel, amen, stopped being, praise the Lord, a, uh, 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 a slave, praise the Lord. They, they changed from becoming a people and they became a nation. And so as a nation, when he gets ready to govern them and give them the law, he says something specific to them. What did he say? He, the first thing, before he could even give them the law, he says, I want you to hear. I want you to understand, beloved, that the most important a man sense you have is not your sight. It is your ears. It is what you hear. Hallelujah. Hearing, praise the Lord, plants a seed down inside of you. That's why you got to be careful what you hear. You can't allow, you can't. Amen. Open yourself up to let every and anybody speak a word to you. Mm, y'all don't like my talking. Either. Some of y'all are so inundated by these parking lot prophets and by these folk that hit your inbox and give you a word. You don't know who they are. You don't know where they come from. But it sounds good to your flesh. So like, oh yeah, that's the word of the Lord. Who are they? Who are they connected to? Who are they submitted to? What word do they know? Yes. If you don't ask yourself these questions, you could have, because let me tell you something, uh, uh, dealing with folk in the prophetic is just like, praise God, a junkie, amen, attracted, praise the Lord, to smack. They give you enough to give you a high, and you spend the rest of your life trying to chase that high. You get stuck. And that's what some of these prophetic utterances do. They give you just enough and it happens because the spirit is behind it to get you hooked on their word. And you, you spend the rest of your life chasing one to the other, to the other, to the other. Pray the Lord. And if you don't receive a prophetic word, you go somewhere else so that somebody else can start speaking into your life. Not understanding that the more mature you become, you begin to get your ears in tune to hear what God is saying. And once you learn how to hear God, you don't need somebody telling you, thus saith the Lord, every five minutes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. Hallelujah to God. And so, amen, praise the Lord. The hearing is important. Go, go, go to verse uh, praise the Lord Romans 10 and 14. Let me show you this. If I read verse 13, Romans 10 and verse 13, I want to show you something. I'm going to keep moving. Expeditiously. Alright, what it says. For whosoever shall excuse me, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That sounds good. Whoever calls on God's name is going to be saved. But what it say? Now then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. Now how are you going to call on somebody that you haven't believed in? Uh -huh. wow. don't make sense. It don't make sense. You're going to call on somebody. I don't believe in you. I don't believe in you. I ain't calling. Ricky, if my, if my tire is flat and I don't think you have the wherewithal to change the, the flat tire, you will not be the number that I die. <laughs> Amen. You may be an awesome singer, but you might not be worth nothing to change a tire. You, you understand? I can change a tire. But do you understand what I'm saying? How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And, 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 and pray the Lord. And so in order to believe something about you, I got to know something about you. Come on, man. Right. Read what it says. And so how are you going to believe in a person that you have never heard of? Right. So, 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 so you understand that hearing, come on somebody, yeah. is what gives you belief in the person that you're going to. I heard 
heard some things about you. Now, 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 how you gonna hear unless there's a voice talking? People say they go to God for everything. God told me this. God, I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you when you tell me God said this and God said this. Because if there's not a man of God anywhere involved and God did all this talking to you, I'm scared of you. Because God is a God of order. God don't bypass whoever he has set over you and give you a word. You are out of order. And if you receive an out of order word, everything that comes behind that is out of order. This is how Eve got deceived by the serpent. God had given a directly revealed word through her husband to her. God didn't talk to Eve. You don't read where God talked to Eve until she's having to give an account for her sin. Put me, check me out. He had already given the revealed revelation and the destiny for their life to Adam. Adam was the set man. Adam was the pastor in the Garden of Eden. Be quiet, Jesus. right, though. And the moment Satan began, because see, Satan don't talk to the leader. Satan don't talk to the one that's going to snuff it out. Satan always goes to the weaker vessel. Ooh, I'm talking better than y'all saying amen. Yes, sir. He always goes to somebody or somebody else. And you know if somebody ain't living right, how they going to have a word for you? Y'all ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you tonight. Huh? He goes, he doesn't go to Adam. Adam is there, but he doesn't talk to Adam. He goes to Eve. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and he strikes up a conversation about the very thing that God said was off limits. Don't do this. And, 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 and she says, well, he said we, do, we shouldn't do it. We do, you know, she just, he, they talk, they have a conversation. That's what some of y'all get in trouble with. You entertain certain conversations. You should. You enter, it all, let me tell you something. We lost our home in the Garden of Eden. It all started with a conversation. You just trying to control my mind. No, I'm trying to keep your mind. Because there's some deep stuff that you really don't know. You think you're ready for it, but you ain't ready for it. You ain't, you ain't really ready. You're going to be a casualty of this war. You're going to be dead on the field because you think you're more than what you are. Can I talk real tonight? Praise the Lord. And, 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 and once the enemy finished talking to her, he had her questioning the motive of God. God had already revealed what his will was and she questioned God's motive. She questioned his revealed authority and gave to him. It was out of order. Praise the Lord. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You've got to be careful who's talking to you, who you open up your spirit in, because everybody don't have your best interest in mind. Some people want to get a hold of you so they let me tell you something. The devil already knows that you are anointed. He wants to use you in life. But if he can get you to make a shipwreck of your spiritual life, he'll stop you before you even get started. That's why you got to be careful who holds you. Yeah, and every time my wife birthed the baby, she was not passing that baby in the church like a loaf of bread. She didn't, she didn't. Did you, Lady Scott? Some folk got their feelings hurt. Because she understood the significance of holding your baby, making sure that all kind of spirits don't get on. She didn't send her baby to the bathroom with every and anybody. Because she understood, praise God, that there are some folk that are really messed up. 
And if the wrong hands hold you, they can mismanage you. They can drop you. They can do you harm. And if they do it in your emphasis stage, by the time you get to the place where you're supposed to make impact, y'all don't like my talking, you're going to be damaged good. God's got to spend a lifetime getting you untangled before he can even use you. When if you just stay and hear what God had to say and obey what God said. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, experience. Let me move on. Praise the Lord. You need an experience with God. You need an experience. There are some people that only know God because of what somebody else has seen. Child, he's a bird and bear. He's a heavy old shepherd. Come on, somebody. Mm, he's so good to me. He's sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Come on, somebody. That sounds good, don't it? Child, if I couldn't say a word, I'd just wave my hand. We like that because that sounds good. We try to get up and talk behind somebody else's testimony. But faith that hadn't been tried, had, can't be tested, hadn't been tested, can't be trusted yet. If you haven't been, praise the Lord, tried in the fire of what you believe, you in what you say can't be trusted. That's why I take time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, folks give a whole bunch of advice as long as shut up. Oh, yes, you might know what you're talking about, but you, you're not a credible witness because you ain't been through it now. Yes, they cut your cable off so you think you're a witness now. <laughs> Somebody finally gossiped on you in church and now you, you feel like you are, amen, the poster child for, amen, being uh, uh, what's the word, persecuted. I've been lying. Talked about. Mistreat you ain't been nothing. And most of the stuff that they say, you invited it by your attitude. Y'all, see, I call it spade or spade in a minute. Let me tell you something about a dog. Yeah. If he's wagging his tail and he look nice, I might pay yeah. if I know him. There you go. But if he's already looking at me growling, I'm going the other way. Yeah. No, I ain't gonna give him no bone. Yeah. I might beat him with a stick. There you go. That dog look like he might bite. Yeah. Some of y'all look mean as a biting dog. Yeah. And you want me to come pet you? The devil is a liar. Praise the Lord. First John, one and one. Experience. What does it say? That which was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning, John says. Which we have heard. We heard it. Which he, we have seen with our eyes. We saw it with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. We looked upon. And our hands have handled. And our hands have handled of the word of life. I've experienced him. There's a song that the old folks used to sing. You can't make me down. Uh -huh. You can't make me down. You can't make me down in my home. Oh, you can't make me down. I know too much about it. You can't make me down in my home. You, you, you read where the Lord is your shepherd, but have you ever needed him to provide a need? And he stepped in on time and actually provided your need. He, now the scripture is no longer something I've read, but I have experienced that God is a way maker. Yes, yes, I, I heard that he was a healer, that, that he was healing the sick, but until you've been sick and he steps in and interrupt those sick cells and lay his hands on you, hallelujah, then you become a witness that, oh God, I've experienced the healing power of God. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather be with a commanding officer who has seen battle been involved in battle rather than someone that have graduated from West Point. 
Call and procedure, but you really don't know war. War is hell. And I need somebody that been through hell. Because if you've been through hell, you can help me out of hell. Praise God. You can tell me to keep my head down. You can tell me to keep my mouth shut. You can tell me when it's time to blend in and when it's time to run. Because you've been through war. Experience, the Bible says, praise the Lord, gives hope. And hope make them not ashamed. You need experience as a disciple. So every once in a while, Peter, God will allow the storms to rage on the water. And you'll say, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come out there to you. And you'll say, come. And he will let you walk on the water for just a little while. Now, while all of the other apostles is in there talking about Peter, you, 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 you sunk, you sunk, you sunk. You talk about how he sunk, but you don't talk about the fact that he actually walked on the water. I got a testimony that you don't have. I may have failed, but at least I walked, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I may have begun to sink, but at least I have the testimony that I know what it feels like to have what should be over me under my feet, praise the Lord. Oh, you don't like my talk up in here. So talk about me when I fail. Talk about me for my shortcoming. Talk about me for what I didn't do right, but at least I walk where you have. Experience, 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 experience. Second Peter 1 and 16. Y'all get anything out of this? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I'm going to bore you to death. Hallelujah. Oh, good, huh? Second Peter chapter 1 and about verse 16. Listen to this. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. My question is this. If Christianity is such a lie, how do you get 12 men to tell the same lie and die for a lie? I love you, Mike. God knows I do. If you're hungry, I feed you. If you need some bill money, I got it. It's yours. I promise. Praise the Lord. Um, go to jail for you. It's get, get kind of close. It depends, you know. Catch me on the right day. Yeah, kind of hairy. But to, but to die for you, and then not only die for you, you know, not that you were innocent, but die and know you was guilty. Die for a lie. Men love their hives too much to die for a lie. That's right. That's right, man. They'll turn on you. They'll turn states evidence. All day long. Just like that. You, you just have to press the right pressure point. You're right. Y'all don't like my talk up here. I'll tell you, listen, bro, listen. So how I know? That this is true because men don't die for a lie. So listen to what Peter says. He says this in verse at verse 16. What did he say? We have not followed cunningly devised fables. We ain't followed no cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But what? But were our witnesses of his majesty. We experienced this thing. Yes, sir. Read. For he received from God the Father. He received from God the Father. Honor and glory. Honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him. When there came such a voice to him. From the excellent glory. From the excellent glory. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. And what is say in this verse? And this voice which came from heaven. Uh -huh. We heard. What? We heard. When we were with him in the holy mount. Listen. When they were on the mountain of transfiguration. See you all got to always allow a witness to follow you. Amen. Peter, James, and John is on top of the mountain with the Lord. 
And all of a sudden, the Bible says that his, his, his garment became transfigured and whiter than any laundromat could get. And all of a sudden, he's now talking to the prophet Moses and the prophet Elijah. Both of them whose deaths are suspect. The Bible says Moses died. But God buried him in the plains of Moab. And we learned, praise the Lord, in Jude that Satan disputed about his body. And that Michael, the archangel, had to tell him, listen, the Lord rebuke you. Wow. Elijah, you can't find his body. No. He was caught up in a chariot of fire. Yes, they went, the sons of the prophet went. To go look for his body. Could not find This is who the Lord Jesus is talking to. He is talking to the law and the prophets. <laughs> Grace and mercy is talking to law. For what the law could not do. Y'all ain't going that might be a little that might be a little bit mean for y'all. Hallelujah. But, but, but do, you, do you understand what's going on? Praise God. Uh, there is, a, praise God, a changing of the guards that is taking place. The dispensation has changed from the law and the promise, and now grace has taken a seat at the helm of destiny, and they're having a conversation about how this is going to take place of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all don't like my job. and said, you know, Lord, it's good for us to be here. He was right about that part. He was scared. Didn't know people go to talk. Let me tell you, just because somebody talks to Santa don't mean that they courageous. It just means sometimes they're scared. That's why they talk. Praise God. And he didn't know what to say. He said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. He said the only thing he had a point in the reference, he, he more religion. He said, let's build three churches. One, one for Moses, the church of Moses. One, one, one uh, uh, for Elijah, the church of Elijah. And then one for you, the church of Jesus. And that's what people do today. They build all different types of churches when there's only really one church. Like There's just one church in which all five of the officers work together. The apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, all of them on the same hand. Not one of them is more important than the other. The same God that made the apostle made the pastor. You can't go to school to be a pastor. You must be made to be a pastor. All right. You can't go to school to be an apostle. You got to be made an apostle. Oh, you better hear what the Holy Ghost is talking today. Just because you get to be the senior bishop in your organization and now, praise the Lord, you have gotten to the heights of the organization and now they need a leader. Now everybody get together and consecrate you an apostle. Put a little hat on your head and put all them big old robes on you. Praise God. And now you are an apostle. You're lying. Your feet stink and you don't love God. A man
You were born with a veil over your head. Because see, if you are born into this world, you are born wrong. That's why you got to be born again. And anything that comes of the flesh, of the flesh will reap corruption. You must be born again. In the former house, you have to be born a prophet. Jeremiah, before thou, pray the Lord, came forth out of your mother's womb. I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. That's for Jeremiah's day. But in the prophet of the latter house, it's the Holy Ghost that gives gifts to men. He said when he led captivity captive, he left first ascended and then he descended and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles. Learn out the ways of 
the heathen.
But here when I, I ain't say you got to speak for five minutes. I ain't say every time you come to church you got to be speaking. Everybody don't have the gift of talk. But the tongue that come with the power of the Holy Ghost, I said, thank God. You ain't never experienced it. You better be asking God, Lord, let me receive that. Because if you get what they got, you can do what they did. But if you got a form of godliness, you ain't got no power. That's why you still cussing folk out. Man. That's why you got to have a stiff one at the end of the day. You ain't got no power. Lord, I, you know, I, I need to do a whole session on the teaching of the Holy Ghost. Because some of us is religious and you ain't got nothing made in the power. I got so happy last night, my daughter from college called me. And she, she's a part, she's, you know, been visiting the fellowship with a group. They got fellowship with people. You can't just be all to yourself. And praise God, they got to talking about Acts 238. Praise the Lord. And so last night, she come from one of their services on campus. And two folk got filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking with other tongues. Who had never, ever been exposed to it in their life. And these guys are missionaries that come from all over the world, came in the Holy Ghost field. I said, oh, I'm coming on the next smoking thing. Hallelujah, the candle. We're going to bring the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Y'all don't like my talk. That, that excites me because you need the Holy Ghost. Experience. You need to experience the Holy Ghost. Not chills. The Holy Ghost. And you ain't going to get him until you want him. And some folks don't want him because they don't think they need him. In fact, they don't know that they need him. But let me just cut through the chase. You need the Holy Ghost. You, need, you got to have the Holy Ghost. You must have it. Repentance, you know, dear Lord, come into my heart. Thank you, Lord. Confess with my mouth, believe my heart. That's good. It ain't enough to keep you. The Bible says that when you receive the Holy Spirit of God, it seals you until the day of redemption. Maybe the letter got wrote and got stuck in the envelope, but you ain't got no seal on it. And if you ain't got no seal, anything can come and pull that letter out. But the Spirit of God seals you. Yes. Have this seal. Lord, you see how got quiet? Yes, yeah, some of y'all sit here tonight think you're going to heaven without the Holy Ghost. You ain't. You ain't going. I don't care about making enemies. You ain't going to heaven without having the Holy Ghost. You ain't praying, God. You ain't getting out of the ground on the first resurrection without the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I don't care how long you've been going to church. Yeah. Here! Yeah. What I'm telling you. Stop that for play with you. Play with your emotions. I like hearing them guys play when they hit that, that sweet note. Boy, my leg just slide like James Brown if I could. There's a time when every one I got to shut down and let you hear what the Spirit is saying in church. Because after the music stopped playing, when they put you in that grave, listen to me good. When that undertaker draw all that blood out your body, put you in a casket, and then put you in what them things is, a vault, and drop you six feet under, put you in a mausoleum, cover you up with dirt. Your only hope for coming out there ever again is to know that you have the Holy Ghost. That's it. Not a book, not a dance. You gotta have the power of the Holy Ghost. And you stop complaining, you stop confessing you have the Holy Ghost and you ain't received it with no power. When the power of the Holy Ghost comes, it comes with a quickening in it. You looking for the tongue, I'm looking for the quickening. Because if you got the real quickening power, the tongue will come. If you don't quicken while you're on the ground, you ain't you don't experience the power of God. If you don't experience the power of God before you die, you book for 
Let that settle. Lord, I might lose some viewers because of this. But you know the Holy Ghost ain't hard to receive. It's need to repent. That's all. Hallelujah. Get real with the Lord. Get sincere with God. You know the reason why some of you can't live? I got to stop because my time is up. I, I might work on this some more. I got to hear it some more. But you know the reason why some of you can't really walk right with God? Because you ain't made your mind up you want to walk right. Your heart, ain't, your heart ain't fixed. Your heart ain't fixed. You want to be friends with the world and friends with God. The Bible says in James that friendship with this world is imitated. It's hostile. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can't please God in the flesh. Hear me! You can't please Him. You can't please Him. Can't please them watching these videos, these hip hop videos with the girls twerking, booty shaking everywhere. You 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 ain't gonna get the Holy Ghost like that. Well, well, remember that. You ain't gonna get the Holy. Look at that, these men with all these shirts off and muscles. In fact, Christian men don't need to be out here popping their muscles. Call your flesh. Right. Show them you got a tattoo on your arm. What? Call it that. You know why folks don't like what I'm telling you? The devil going to rise up in you and fight me. You know why you fighting me in your spirit? Because it's your flesh that makes you want them things. And those are the things that got you tied up and wrapped up in your flesh. I'm trying to get you free. And so when real truth comes, the spirit, the, the evil spirit, fight.
to a nice, calm church. Go on, you go to hell after you get there. You need the Holy Ghost. The demons that you're going to be dealing with, you're going to need the Holy Ghost. The thing that's coming up against your families, you're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. a supernatural advantage over the enemy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't have it without the Holy Ghost. What do you mean, Pastor? Y'all give me just, just, just. Okay, I'm going to The Holy Ghost is the informational part of the garden. Okay? The Holy Ghost Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call him, is the informational part of the Godhead. He gives you supernatural intel or intelligence about what's going on in the spirit realm. There are some things that you can acquire by speaking English. That's why the Bible says you must learn how to pray in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit means I'm praying in an unknown tongue. Now, when I'm praying in an unknown tongue, my, praise the Lord, natural mind is not fruitful, but my spiritual man is what's praying. And what's happening is there is a download, amen, coming out of glory down in my spirit that's going to give me what I need to triumph over this next thing. You start seeing in the spirit. God start talking in your spirit. He talked to me this week. He said, he said, I want you to pray against spiritual assassins. He said, somebody's trying to assassinate you in the spirit. You start having dreams about running. Y'all ever had them dreams like you keep running and just before they get to you, you hit again and you move. Anybody ever had them kind of dreams? The whole Lord said those are spiritual assassins. They're running you. And you wake up in the morning tired because you didn't really rest. Your adrenaline was pumping in your sleep. Spiritual assassin. How, how, how do you know that? I got the Holy Ghost. You natural though, you ain't going to get it. Because a natural man don't receive the spirit of the things of God. The spiritual things of God. Can't even discern. Uh -huh. There are stuff that happened in the spirit. You need the Holy Ghost to discern. Oh, man. There are some people that die prematurely because they don't walk in the spirit. Mm. Have nobody. Lord have mercy. Mm. That's what it was about. Mm. Spiritual assassin. I'm telling y'all, and it didn't work. They tried it one way, but it didn't work. See, I couldn't even make up an answer. Because <laughs> like outside of y'all, we he's like, what are you talking about Scott? Let me just say this, and I, and I, 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 I'm gonna quit because I know y'all got to go. Y'all might not come back see me next Wednesday if I hold you to it. <laughs> God's hand is on the way, church. I'm going to say that one more time. God's supernatural divine hand of providence is on the way, church. Without a shadow of a doubt. I know I'm in the right place at the right time for the right season. Yes, I know. Yes, right. I ain't talking about shy. I ain't confused. I know. Yes, and because God intends to use, what did the man of God say during the anniversary? He said we are gatekeepers. Yes, Why did it take so long for us to even start growing? We will be in fault because of our prophetic apostolic voice in the world. Financially fault. Because if he can keep you, churches ain't about nothing. They just grow, 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 grow. Yes, yes. They ain't about nothing. Hey! Hey! 
Oh, God has given you a word. You're going to be fought. God's hand is over us. And we are in spiritual warfare. The enemy's sending out all kinds of stuff. All kinds. But I, tonight I rebuke every satanic interference. In the name, yeah, clap your hands. In the name of Jesus. I mean, clap it like you got the devil in your head. I rebuke, hallelujah, every satanic interference, every spirit of hindrance that comes to shut down what God is doing. We rebuke it now. In the name of And prayer will be your friend. Yes. Pick you a day out in the week to turn your plates down. As the new year comes in, we will have a more corporate day to fasting. But pick you a day out in the week to turn your plate down. And go into spiritual warfare. Things that are happening in your house that are fighting you are not coincidental. The most shot Hallelujah. 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 I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It's not coincidental. You are in the crossfires of a fight. You can't afford to be disadvantaged. You need to walk in the spirit. If anybody here don't have the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't try to do nothing else until I got filled. Good and filled. You ain't hear what I'm telling you. It's going to take the Holy Ghost in this season. If you got the Holy Ghost, ask God to give you a refill. Recharge me. Reignite my fire. For some reason, Lord, I don't let no things to come between me and you. And we have become lukewarm. Glory to God. But God 
It's about to be on. It's about to be on. Sir, you have an anointing over your life. I saw what God did. I saw what he did. And you'll talk about that anointing. Sometimes you don't quite understand it yourself. Because there's some things that you have done that you thought God should have left you, but he never left you. Oh, God, he never left you. You want me to tell you the truth? He never left you. He was there. He was there. You went through an identity crisis. And there was nobody to tell you who you were. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, you are a mighty man of God. You know, you know,
Those assassins come in the form of words spoken by others against your life. They come in your dreams. They come in your thought pattern. There are some of you that live in certain locations in your house. Every time you get in that spot, you have thoughts. Yeah. Thank you. 